Hey, it's Random Code here, and today I want to showcase how we connect MongoDB container instance to a Spring Boot application. And in this showcase, we're using Spring Boot here, and our MongoDB instance is then going to be inside a Docker container started with Docker Compose. And I think first, I will actually just like to showcase that it works, and then we're going to go through all the Docker setup and all the Spring Boot. So, first, inside my Docker Compose to start it, I will just simply do Docker. Compose up, and then quickly while that's starting, we then have a REST controller inside Spring Boot, which allow us to have a few endpoints. As we can see here, I have slash user, where I can pass an ID to get a user. I have a user slash all, where we get all users, and we have a slash user with a post where we can save an user to the database. And let's see if it works. So now our MongoDB instance is up and running. I will then simply start my Spring Boot application. There we go. And to then showcase it actually works, I will be using Postman, where you can see you already been testing it a bit previously, but let's first just do it again. So I'll just have localhost port 8080, which is the standard for Spring Boot. If nothing else has been set up, you will then do localhost 8080 slash user, and I will change it to a post. I will then need to add an ID. Let's just do ID1. Let's do name one. And I can then send it to the database. In this case, I haven't set up any kind of response, so it should just work. And we didn't get any errors. Let's add a few more. Let's do a ID2 as well. And an ID3. So now we should have three people inside our user document from our database. So I can then now use my get response calls. We just pass ID and say, let's get our user one. And we now get all the information. I have a bit extra information, which I will show shortly, but we have an ID, a name, an age, and an email. We do it for ID one, we do it for ID two, so on. And I can also just remove my query parameters and do slash user slash all to get a list of all the users. And as mentioned, actually, because it's been saved. I can see here we actually have some of the extra tests I did previously to test everything works. Just to showcase again that we actually have some kind of local storage setup. So we actually have a few more people than what I just added. And one thing to note, if we wanted to like update a person, we don't extract, change, and so on. I would simply just do slash user post. And let's say we want to change the one with ID2. We just again pass ID2, which kind of like set to the be the primary key for these users. And I now want it to be have user two instead of being name what name two. Let's just do let's say she's actually Hannah. So now I send it to the database. And if I now get on ID2 again, we can see that the person with ID2 have now had a, had the name updated with Hannah. Because what we're actually doing, we're saving like an entirely new body with a new name. But because they have the same IDs, it's going to be overwritten. So that is the basic functionality. Now let's go through all the code. And just again, the functionality we have here, we have a MongoDB database inside a Docker container. It is then connected to a Spring Boot application. And I then had a few REST endpoints where I could either get a user, get all users, or host a user. And first, let's go through the Docker Compose setup. We just have a very simple Docker Compose with a version. We have a service which is named our Mongo container. We're getting it from the Mongo latest image on Docker Hub. We set an environment variable where we create and initialize our database user, which is the database we're using to save information. We are exposing from port 27,017 inside the container to outside the container. Let me actually just showcase. So if I do Docker PS, we can see here we have a running Docker container which is then exposing from the inside the container port 27000 to 0000, 000 which means local host, same port. We then also have this volume setup where we are connecting from inside our container or data DB, which is where it's saving its information. And it's then going to be saved locally to Mongo data container, which is the volume. And if we actually do Docker volume ls, we can see here a few extra volumes that we set up, but we also have our MongoDB Mongo data container volume. And we'll go and check how much space this is taking up and so on and so on. But that is the basic Docker setup. 
actually just very simple because we're just more or less using all the functionality from the Mongo container, just setting a few environment variables, exposing a few ports, and connecting it to a local volume. Let's now have a look at the Spring Boot setup. So it is firstly, I just started a new Spring Boot application using IntelliJ and then get a very simple basic project. We have the Spring Boot MongoDB application where we mainly need an enable Mongo repositories to make sure we can use MongoDB repositories. And then inside my resources, application.properties, have a few like metadata setups, which allow us to connect to the database where we simply find that we are using admin access. We're doing it on localhost, on port 27017 once again, and we're using the user database. And one thing to note, we're not adding any passwords here, so this is very much just like a dev setup. It shouldn't be used um, in production. Then for the pure Spring Boot setup, we have a setup where I have a controller, document, repository, and a service, where if we go from like the bottom up, we first have our user document, which is defined with the document tag, that is gonna be a user. We then define an ID, which is what we saw was used very much as like a primary key. We then have our, our name, our age, our email. We have a basic constructor, I should get us some setters, I'm not really using, but just a very basic Java setup. And we then have a user repository, which is an interface annotated with that repository, which extends Mongo repository. And then defining in this case, we are going to be extracting and inserting the user document and the ID type is going to be along. I then have a few calls to the database, a find by ID, give it an ID or a find all. Let's now look at a user service, which is kind of like the next step where we have our user repository, which is then dependency injected using an auto wired, using constructor injection. And we then annotate it with that service. We then have a few methods, small as just mapping the functionality from our repository. So we don't directly connect to our repository, but we would have like get user by ID, which calls the repository, and return an optional, depending rather that there is a user, get all returning a list of all the users. And we had a save user, which say it in an ID and a name, would call our repository.save, create a new user given the ID, given the name, and then I'm just setting the age and the email to the same every time. And then last but not least, for the user controller, we then simply have our user service, which is then dependency injected using an auto-wired construct injection, and we then use this user service with the input from our get mappings or post mappings. So for example, we had our get mapping last user with our request parameter ID, so we saw whenever we give it an ID, this ID is then sent to the user service, which then send it to the user repository, which then gathered information from the database. And very similar, the use slash all. In this case, you're not sending information, we're just calling the get all method. And with the slash user post, we have two request parameters, an ID and a name. And these are a very similar to service then create a new user and send this new user to the repository which saves it in the database. So a relatively simple setup. We have a controller, document, repository, and a service and our entire Docker Compose setup. And I will of course leave a link in the description to a GitHub repository where you can have a look at all of this yourself. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed this demonstration of how we can connect MongoDB and Spring Boot. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe and I wish you all a wonderful day.